Greetings, Talvar. It's Balance Data Slate Day, and there's been quite a bit of a shake-up um, within the meta. And I also think there's some really good changes to the core fundamentals of the game. Now, what I'm going to do in this episode is I don't want to take up too much of your time, so I'm going to try and keep it short and sweet. Um, you've obviously all by now seen um, the documents, probably downloaded them and had a chance to kind of like sift through them. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you my take on the changes to Tau. Uh, and I'm also going to give you my take on changes to other factions because I think that's going to definitely help us. Some of the top offenders have been knocked down a peg or two. I'm also going to just briefly discuss a couple of core changes to the, the fundamentals. And I'm going to highlight um, also um, a couple of the rule changes that I spotted that could impact some of our units. Then at the end, I'm going to give you a crew detachment list. Um, just that I made about 20 minutes, half an hour ago. And it's quite spicy. But anyway, without further ado, um, let's get on to Tau changes. So what we've basically had is the first change has been Commander Farsight. He was 105, he's gone down to 95. Um, a welcome change. I didn't expect it, but I'll take it. 10 points cheaper for Commander Farsight. His abilities are great. Plus one to wound when you're within 9 inches for him and his units. And also reduction um, of uh, CP. Sorry, reduce the stratagem by 1 CP. Um... I think it's great, 95 points, nice and tasty. I'll take that. Now, the other changes have been uh, crew carnivores. So crew carnivores um, were 75 points, they're now 65. So if you're taking unit at 10, it's 65 uh, rather than 75. And if you're taking unit at 20, it's 130 rather than 150. I think that's great. I think crews are gonna be phenomenal um, in the crew detachment because of you know the, the, the 65 points price tag or 130. And I also think they're gonna be great in all detachments. To have sticky, scout move 7, stealth for that points cost is great. They're kind of comparable to, say, jungle uh, catch and jungle fighters uh, that are 55 points. Um, and it's just like a dip. They both have scout, but crew scout slightly faster. Um, crew have sticky. So, yes, catch hands are just overall probably a little bit better, but you've got different rules here. So, I actually really love uh, the reduction for crew. I think it's solid, and I think you're going to see them a lot more. Then all the crew characters have gone down by 10 points. So Flesh Shapers, 45 points. Um, Trail Shaper, 55. Crew War Shaper, 50. Um, that's great. I can see a world where actually, uh, I'm not just going to constantly talk about the crew detachment, but say the um, package of doing 10 crew with a Trail Shaper and say Kion, for 120 points, you've got 10 man crew that can go out there sticky, they're OC2. Um, and then also the if you get within nine they can react to move so that little package is quite cheap and also you'll see uh crew war shapers taken um in <clears throat> in say monk car as well um so i'm gonna get into that on another video because i'm gonna do like kind of like detachment breakdowns but um for me i think the crew characters going down is a much needed change and it's going to really help out across the board the other thing that is the spice here, it's the uh, Donkey Kong City, I like to call it. So our crew tox and our rampages. Now rampages were 220 for 6 or 110 for 3. They're now 95 for 3 and 190 for 6. This is amazing. For, for what they can do, if you just look at the profile, um, don't necessarily automatically assume 6. Even if you look at 3, for 95 points, you're getting 15 T6 wounds. 15 wounds at T6. And they pack a, the grenade keyword. They can do grenades in the charge phase. And they've got okay attacks. So for their points, they're brilliant. They're going to absolutely be seen in crew detachment. You're going to see, you know, two units of six of them, maybe even 18. I'm not looking at anyone in particular. Uh, <laughs> and I think this for me, is um, really good to see because I love the models. They're new, they're fantastic, and I like to get a little bit of combat in my lists. Then you look at Crutox Riders. So Crutox Riders is a simple change. They've labelled it Amber because if you take a single model, it's gone up. It used to be 35 for a single model. It's now 40, but the rest of the points have remained unchanged. So you can take a unit of three for 90 points. Same thing as Rampages. They just have a different role. Um, their ability of their pack ability to shoot if you shoot at the Crut, um 
I think that's great. And 90 points for, again, 15 wounds at T6 is nothing um, to be sniffed at. Because they actually do have OC as well. They have OC2. So a unit of three is OC6, which is a kind of a sweet spot on objectives. Because most MSU trading pieces will have five models in, and they're only OC5. So being able to put three of these on an objective to have OC6 on there behind a ruin or hidden means that the enemy has to commit something uh, of more value or that has, you know, more OC than five. So I think this is not bad. And I think you're going to see units of these dotting around in all detachments. Now, Piranhas, let's talk a little bit about this because there's two data sheets that have been um, increased in points. And one of them I'm okay with and one of them I'm a little bit like, hmm. And the hmm unit is Piranhas. So I compare the Piranhas to, say, Scout Sentinels in Imperial Guard. And the Scout Sentinels has remained the same points. So like the 55 points for a single one, so 165 for three, 110 for two, 65, 55 for one. And the Piranhas used to have that points cost. Now Piranhas have gone up by five points each. So there's no divider between how many you take in terms of the points. It's just straight up 60 points for one, 120 for two, and 180 for three. The Piranha data sheet's very good. For 55 points, a T7, seven wounds, Battleshock ability, uh, Scout move nine, move 14, Fusion Blaster armed with two once per game seeking missiles, um, was really good. And you were seeing in a lot of lists, just three single Piranhas zooming around and uh, doing actions and just committing uh, interference. That was their role. And that is fine. So, but the problem I have now is that in certain detachments, one that's maybe not seen a bit of love and has been struggling a little bit outside of particular kind of, say, you know, uh, geographical metas like the US, is Montcarl's not been doing very well. Right now, Kion and Retaliation has been the clear winners in um, the stat check uh, meta dashboard and the Meta Monday reviews that you've been seeing. So in my Montcarl lists... I actually went in with a lot of piranhas, so I was taking like units of three piranhas um, because their alpha striking ability is amazing. Um, but now I'm paying a tax for that, and Montcar's not really doing well, so I think that punishes certain builds, like particularly the Montcar one. What I would have liked to see happen with piranhas is you do the same treatment that you've done for Krutox riders. So all the other detachments are taking like single piranhas just for action monkeys and small little th trading pieces. So make a one model piranha 60 points, but keep the rest of them the same. Um, I could even forgive like 60 and 120, but keep three as 165. Uh, because that doesn't penalise the Montcar build, but it penalises, say, Kion or any other detachments that's taken singular ones for those purposes that I mentioned before. So that's the one I'm a little bit salty about, and Scout Sentinels having pretty much all of the same rules, and it's got Hunter Killer, it's got the Laz Cannon, Scout Move, so on and so forth, but that also has the Regiment keyword, so it can come back for 2 CP. So when you compare those two, the Piranhas are now definitely the losers, yes, Scout Sentinels don't have the Battleshock ability, but again, 60 points versus 55, that seems a little bit heavy-handed in my honest opinion. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are about the Piranhas in the comments. I'd love to hear them. Now, the other one is the Riptide. Now, this one I have no problems with. I'm going to say this straight off. I don't really understand why people are complaining. Um, I understand, I suppose, but I just don't really get it. 190 points for a T9 4-up uh, in Von 2-up save, 14 wounds... Uh, durable, you know, big boy Riptide is absolutely fine. I think it's obviously more powerful in Kion and Montcar because lethal's in Montcar, um, and then Kion with the sustain it's too. And obviously, the frustration point about Riptide is that well, they're a guy on guns, only strength eight, so it's not really you know wounding things like rhinos or transports very well. But that's not what does the damage. That what what does the damage is the sustain hits two. And then, obviously, ignoring modifiers, fall back and shoot, dev wounds once per game. I know you might have different success stories about it, but at the end of the day, the Riptide is still very good for uh, 180 points. And now that it's only gone up by 10 points, isn't the end of the world. So, um, how does that change the list? Well, my LGT list that still has, you know, the, the Iron Hammerheads, it had, like, the Breachers, the Strike Teams, the, the, they had three Hammerheads, one Rail, two Ions, three Riptides, three Stealth Pathfinders, Crisis Team, Cold Star, two Breaches, two Strikes, and Delfish, and a unit of crew went up by 20 points. Well, okay, 
Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just drop a strike team. And then I've got 55 points left. I'll put in a catch a fire blade. Problem solved. So these changes won't really affect your list very much. You just have to can maybe take away a trading piece or take off an enhancement or change one unit to a different unit. It's not big. So I don't think there's any major shakeups within your uh, existing list that you've got. Finally, uh, the two things to discuss is the um, Tiger Shark surviving. It's not been legended, so I know Lewis Smith will be very happy. Um, he did a fantastic run at LGT coming fourth, uh, arguably one of the hardest and most challenging events in the world. Um, and, you know, the Tiger Shark played a massive role within that and how he used it was perfect. And that staying at the same point and also not getting legended is going to obviously motivate others to maybe bring their Tiger Shark out to play. So the... Other thing is the uh, Pure Tide Nothing chip, which has finally been changed to the Pure Tide Engram Neuro chip, and it actually does something now. So this has received mixed reviews from uh, everybody, myself included. So um, it's now been basically changed to the Ethereal's ability, but slightly worse, because you have to target um, the bearer and his unit with a stratagem, and on a 4+, plus you gain a CP. Now, the Ethereal's ability is just, at the command phase, on a 4+, plus you gain a CP. So 50% it works every time, 60% of the time. <laughs> so 50% of the time you might get a CP, but this one is when you're using a stratagem. Now, I expected a little bit more from this, but I understand why maybe they didn't go in that direction because it could have been a bit too powerful, like pick a name stratagem, pick a stratagem, it becomes a name one. Um, or there was one suggestion that I was kind of like pushing for, which was um, just give it the farsight ability. You know, pure tides teachings, reduce this CP by one. But then if you had both Farsight and this like character with this enhancement, then that and you could be doing three inch deep strikes on retaliation for one CP. So I get why maybe it's not like been changed to that. Um, but I also think that 25 points for only getting a CP back on a four plus when you spend a strategy on that unit is a bit steep. But there is definitely some positives within it because before we couldn't take an Ethereal because we've got Farsight in the list. And obviously, Farsight loves being in retaliation for his, the, to make, really make use of the plus one to wound with a three-inch deep strike and re making it one CP is great. So I think with this one, it's a cheeky way of potentially getting some CP back into your list, which is really important with retaliation. So I don't think it's a complete miss. Uh, I think it still has some uses, but it's definitely not maybe where we wanted it to be. So that's enough for the Tau. Um, the Tau FAQ... They've just put in about the pure tide neuro chip, um, a couple of little FAQs that don't really matter. They just clarified that you can't use the war shaper's ability to reduce the cost of the CP for join the hunt. Uh, you can't shoot crew tox riders at something if they've chosen to shoot your crew and you've loan up them. Um, and also the pivot value is still zero whether you put your crisis suits on flying stems providing the kit or not. So if you look at going back to the uh, points changes elsewhere, I'm going to quickly kind of give you my thought process on each of the ones um, that I'm going to go in order. Uh, World Eaters, so you've had Angron, Spawn, and Master of Executions go up. Um, Demon Prince go down. So I think the core list that you're seeing with World Eaters will be remain the same they might have to adjust a few things here or there maybe they lose a unit of jackals or something like that to fit in because the spawn is still really good uh, angron is obviously still a beat stick so um i don't quite know how many points they've gone up by but if you just assume that it's like 50 under 50 points then they'll have to drop something which is easily doable like a unit of jackals is 65 so that could eat up the changes so i think world leaders are going to remain pretty much unchanged uh, bar a few tweaks here and there then we look at tyranids so tyranids at the moment were um, currently just spamming loads of monsters um and it was just rushing at you there was certain other builds that could do a few other things, but mainly it was monsters. So what they've done is they've put up Old One Eye, they've put up the Lick to Spam, and a single Pyroball Moral now is like the Krutox, 40 points, uh, because they were just taking it to strip cover. Um, interestingly, though, the Winged Hive Tyrant's gone down, Von Leapers have gone down, and also Carnifexes have gone down. So they've not really touched the bare... They've not really touched the fundamentals of Tyranids. They've just increased a few little things. Um, so, I, again, I still think Tyranids are going to be performing uh, just as well. Uh, they just have to make a few tweaks here and there. Thousand Suns, well, that's a sea of red. So, Thousand Suns have taken a little bit of a, well, not a little, a big blow to the stomach. So, 
Thousand Suns are um, not happy. <laughs> They're not. <laughs> the players aren't happy. So all of the characters have pretty much gone up. Uh, the Vortex Beast has gone up. Rubric Marines for five have gone up, um, but ten models have stayed the same. Um, Zangor Enlightened have gone up. The Forge Fiend has gone up to go in line with other Forge Fiends because the Thousand Sun ones were cheaper. And then the Sorcerer has gone up as well. Um, yeah, I mean, they were sitting third in the meta on um, stat checks, so I can understand why. And uh, I think that combined with the previous nerf of you cannot indirect uh, torrent weapons, I think Thousand Sun players will have to kind of go back to the drawing board. But I know a lot of good Thousand Sun players out there that will definitely come up with some spice. Maybe they go to Terminators, uh, maybe they go in a completely different direction. Maybe they go down the shooting build rather than just spamming the Vortex Beasts. We've already gone through Tau, Space Wolves, so Thunderwolf Cavalry, Logan Grimnar, Bjorn the Fell Handed have all gone up. And then a few adjustments in terms of Wolf Guard have gone down. They're not very rarely seen. The same with the Sky Claws uh, and the Hounds of Morakai. Now, what I think will probably happen here is that you'll see lists still with Thunderwolf Cavalry, but you won't be seeing 18 of them or 12 of them. Maybe there's lists where uh, they take, I don't know, more of the um, MSU style build. Maybe they go Wolf and Heavy or Scouts and loads of stuff in the list. Um, and maybe, I don't know, looking at long fangs, I don't know if they're any good anymore, but I could definitely see somebody trying out um, uh, maybe a drop pod with long fangs um, and going a bit more of a go wide build. So I think my prediction on Space Wars is to go wide build um, rather than just banking on Thunderwolf Cavalry left, right, and center. Space Marines, okay, in short, what you're going to have um, is maybe you're still going to see the Eradicator squad um, with the Biologists, um, but. That's gone up. So Biologist's gone up and the Eradicator squad have gone up as well. And that's what you were seeing, um, you know, a six-man unit with the Biologist and just going, I'm going to nuke everything that I see. So that's gone up. And then so have um, the Assault Intercessors with Jump Packs uh, for five models. So 90 points now for five, but the 10 still say the same points. You've had reductions on things like Heavy Intercessor squads. Uh, you've had reductions on, like, the, the ATVs and the Invicta Warsuits. So maybe, maybe you see more heavy intercessor squads, maybe again, a slight go wide build, or maybe they just bank into going back to dreadnoughts. I and mean, in the Invictus Warsuit, I remember the days, the tactical Invictus Warsuit that we used, they got infiltrating and they're pretty durable, especially with AOC. Um, maybe they do the pressure build with them. We don't know. And Ballistus dreadnoughts have gone down as well. So Again, Space Marines haven't really been touched. They didn't really need to be touched apart from these specific um, units like I said, the Eradicators and the uh, Jump Pack Marines that were uh, just seen everywhere. So Space Marines, um, watch this space, I think. I think there'll be some spicy builds. I'm sure John Lennon will make his, uh, a new one that will uh, have the internet copy him for, for years to come. Orcs, this is a big worry for me. Um, I know a very good player, Brian Sepp, um, so he will definitely be rejoicing uh, and orcs going down across the board beast snagger boys big mechs big mech in armor uh, mega knobs kill rigs um <laughs> the boys death copters uh, lots of things have gone down so i can definitely see orcs dominating the um horde meta so i think there's two armies that are going to be bringing in the hordes in my opinion it's going to be orcs and it's going to be gsc um, so I think we need to prepare for a big global war because they're coming. Necrons, destroyers, heavy destroyers, monoliths, death marks, tesseract vault, the things that you've been seeing on stream and been spammed, especially in their hypercrypt um, detachment, have all gone up. Um, the thing I'd probably say about this is that a few things have been kind of reduced, but I don't know if it's enough incentive for them to take. Uh, I know Mark Crombleholm's... Um, a consistent Necron player, and I think um, me and him have played many games in the past, and maybe they go back to Wraiths again. I don't know. Um, but I can see Doomsday Arts going down, which they have done by 10, Triarch Stalker going down, um, Triarch Praetorians. So, yeah, you're not going to see the spamming of Destroyers um, in enough models like you've been seeing online on uh, streams, but I think there's still going to be a build there. We'll just have to wait and see. Leagues of Botan, just the Jaegers have gone up. Um, I just 
started collecting Leagues of Botan and just seen that change. And then Hearthguard have gone down for five models, but stayed the same for 10. I would have liked to see the 10 go down, but I can understand why. And maybe we'll just see units of five now to really make use of dropping out of a land fort, for example, and then getting reroll wounds. I don't know if enough about I don't know enough about like the Imperial Agents, so I'm not gonna go into Imperial Agents, but Imperial Knights, Canis going up and big knights going down. Um that's pretty much it. Grey Knights going down, but in chats that I'm in, Grey Knights are still too expensive. You, you know, certain players are like, oh great, I saved 40 points, let me have a look at the enhancements. Um, but Grey Knights just are way too expensive for doing next to zero damage. And I know they're a very high skill cap army because there's lots of tricks and you can you can play the differentials. Um, in we can play for kind of drawish kind of games and tight games if your opponent makes mistakes. But if they don't make mistakes, it's just really hard for them. And I tried to write Grey Knights lists for like three hours the other day and I was pulling what little hair I have on my face out. It was so frustrating. GSC, now I know Innis has been um, using GSC to um, perfection and he's been doing really well and I'm sure he'll be happy to see um, that the changes to Aberrants, uh, Acolytes, Jackals, um, Acolytes with auto pistols, Acolytes with hand flamers, um, just basically all of the models like that he was taking. And I know one of his recent lists is spamming a lot of the hand flamers and auto pistols and stuff. All of that's gone down. So again, like I said before, Orcs and GSC are going to be bringing this kind of horde game uh, that we'll need to prepare for as Tau players. So Flamers, Burst Size, they're all going to be your best friend. Shikari, again, most of this stuff, guys, it's just all the things that you've seen spammed, like Three Reavers, uh, Incubi, Court of the Archon, Beastmaster, Archon, Lilith, Mandrakes, Drazar. Well, meh, I've not really seen Drazar being spammed, but I get the picture. The Incubi and Drazar, Reavers, they've all gone up. And then the things that have gone down is like Hellions as well. So maybe they take a few units of Hellions because five models for 75 points, 10 for 150, not too shabby. Death Guard, just the Biologist Purifier has gone down. Death Shroud Terminator has gone down. Mortarian has gone down. So nothing really notable, but those little points, maybe it gives them an extra enhancement. Dark Angels, the Offenders. So Deathwing Knights gone up to 250 for five. Asriel has gone up. The things that have gone down is like Samael, Ravenwing Command Squad, uh, the, the Lion, and uh, Land Speed of Vengeance. Okay, so maybe they don't spam three units of five Deathwing Knights anymore. Maybe they just take two and then fill it out with something else. So that's good. CSM. So Dark Commune and Accursed Cultists, so the ACDC lists. Um, they have obviously been... Um, uh, nerfed in terms of points i think we'll still see them because they are still very good but i don't think you'll be seeing the spam because the couple of key things that i want to mention now is that the surge move has obviously been limited to once per uh, phase so you're no longer going to constantly be able to keep surging and the accursed cultists going up to you know 16 models is 195 points and same with the dark coming going up in points then maybe you're going to see two bricks of them um, it's quite funny that Liam VSL's LGT list, and he won LGT, if you didn't already know, has actually gone down because he took all the things that weren't um, popular. <laughs> and hats off to him, you know. Um, so CSM is an interesting spot. Chaos Knights, just big knights have gone down. The Stalker and the Hunt Huntsman War Dog has gone down because they're rarely seen. Demons, just had the Ren Master go up. Uh, Beast of Nugget going down. Everything else will stay the same, so demon list will pretty much stay the same. Blood Angels have had adjustments uh, up and down. Um, the things that have been spammed, like the Ball Predators, Death Company Jump Packs, and the Martis, Blood Angels Captain, they've all gone up. Uh, Sangre Regard have gone down to represent them only being able to take three or six models. Um, and then same with um, some of the Death Company characters and Dreadnoughts. So I'm not too sure. I'm not a Blood Angels player. If you are, let me know what you think in the comments. Black Templars, the Crusader squads and the Bricks have all been um, increased in points, which is good. Astra Militarum, this is the big one. Okay. Bulgrin have gone up, 220 and 110. I called it NAS. I said that they'd uh, get the same points as um, the Rampages, and they have. So 220 for six models and uh, three models for 110. 
So you may still see them, but you're definitely not going to see 18 of them. Um, the absolute war crime is that the new Tempestus Aquilans are 90 points for 10. That is definitely going to soften the blow of the Bulgarin going up because they can 3-inch deep strike even with rapid ingress because it's stated in their data sheet. And then when they do, they can fire one of their special weapons, aka the Flamer or the Melt, whatever they want. Uh, one, 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 one shot or whatever, whatever gun they choose. Tank Commander has gone up, but obviously I've heard he's got some keywords so he can order himself and some stuff and stuff, stuff like that. I don't really understand Guard fully. I'm not a Guard player, but what I would say is that the absolute war crime for me is that the Tempest Aquilans are 90 points for 10. And also the Ogryn squad, so maybe the day of the Bulgarin is over and the day of the Ogryn is in. Um, three models for 60 points. <laughs> And six models for 120. So you could take 18 Ogryn uh, for 360 points. Um, and apparently, the, you know, the, the strength 6 AP 1, 2 damage for the shots, 3 shots. And they get an extra AP when they target the closest one. And uh, you can increase, find a way to give them ignore cover and increase the AP. So they could be shooting in you with, what, if there's a unit of 6 of them, that's 18 shots. And it'll be AP 3, strength 6. Um, ignoring cover. Uh, yes, they're not as durable. They only have a 6 up final pain and a 4 plus save, 5 plus save. I'm not too sure. I've not checked out. Um, but yeah, we're going to see probably Ogryn. <laughs> and um, everything else has pretty much remained the same. Uh, Scout Sentinels, they've gone down now to the same points as Piranhas that were. And then some of the things like Heavy Weapon Squads and Field Orders Battery has gone down. But everything else has pretty much remained the same. So Guard is still going to be a powerhouse. Eldari, some things have gone down. Fire Prisms, uh, Void Reavers, Corsairs, Wave Serpents, Warlock Conclave, uh, Skyrunner Conclave, uh, Falcon, and uh, nothing's kind of gone up. So Eldari, probably some Spice. Oh, sorry, Wraith Blades and Wraith Guard and Wraith Knight have gone down. So maybe we're going to see Wraith Blades and Wraith Guard come back. Uh, so Depths Mechanicus, I'm going to whiz through these last ones. So Adeptus Mechanicus, now a lot of things have gone up. Um, Sky Stalkers, uh, the Taraxi, um, the Iron Strider Ballistus, and the Vanguard, Skatari Vanguard, because you've seen them spammed. But in all honesty, okay, Admech just have so much stuff that if they lose a single unit, it's not going to matter. They're still going to be another Horde one. So I would add that to the Horde threat that's coming. So Admech still, Orcs, and GSC. Custodies, the Dreadnoughts have gone down. Velour Trajan's gone down. And the bikes have gone down. I still think it's not enough. That They're in a really rough spot, Custodies. Sisters. So, Brings of Flame has obviously had a huge um, point increase um, in terms of all their enhancements. And then, obviously, units like Castigators have gone up. Uh, Dialogus, the Minion Squads, Emulators, the Triumph, Seraphim Squads, Paragon Warsuits, and Morgan Vile have gone up. I think that even though this is good, seeing all these points increases, and I think um, lists have gone up by around about 160 to uh, 120 to 160 points, but I know some clever players out there like Jack Tite who will be cooking up some spice and it wouldn't surprise me if they didn't take the Triumph anymore and just that eats away loads of the points and just puts more stuff in the list. So I still think you're going to see Tank Spam Sisters, more bodies, and uh, less tricks, you know, with removal of the Triumph, but I definitely can see them still being very powerful. So don't be celebrating too soon because I still think Sisters are a really strong army. And GW did say that they're going to be looking at um, the mechanics of the um, GSC one where they, they bring units back and the Miracle Dice uh, for the next uh, slate that they bring out with rules. So I know I've kind of waffled on a little bit there, but I think it is important to go through other factions just so we kind of know what's going on from their perspective. And I think this is something that all players should do. It's not just focus on your own faction. Have a look at how the rest of the meta around you has changed. So in terms of um, the, the core changes here, I'm going to very quickly give you a few things on the companion pack. So um, what they've changed is you can score Storm Hostile Objective in the first turn, and you can 
obviously redraw it if you want to. They've changed uh, linchpin to max 15 because in the event of going second and you're going and you score something like 23 points, uh, but now they've capped it at 15. Scorched Earth, they've just put each time a player burns an objective marker. Um, for common sense, it's not changed, uh, but maybe they had to stipulate player for some other reason, uh, like rather than unit, so it's a player. Hidden Supplies, um, they've just stated that otherwise the players roll off, um, which which corner the objective marker is moved towards, so they just put that in there. Um, but the key thing is... Um, oh, catch up. So the key thing that they've changed in... Uh, I think it's actually in the rules commentary. Sorry, just give me one second. Oh, um, one thing to add is assassinate. They put models in there, call the horde. When that unit's players added that unit to their army, the points value that they subtracted from the points permitted to serve the battle was sufficient for the unit to pick up 20 more models. Okay, so they just added that in there. The key thing, rather than trying to find it specifically, and I think it's in the core rules, is that now you can no longer score primary points on turn five if you've taken a secret mission this is huge and it's really good change for the game there we are so secret missions in the fifth battle round you cannot score any vp from the primary mission card this is huge and it's something to really take note of as a tau player because certain missions take take and hold for example you're going second well, you destroyed the enemy, you just walk on, you've got 15, you've done a secret mission for Unbroken Wall, there's 35 points out of 50 just for going second. That was not fair in a game of 40k, because 50 points is meant to be spread out over a tactical game of five turns, or four turns when you consider primary. Um, well, no, I can just score 35 in the last turn. And like Linchpin as well, and all these other, all these other missions that were stacking points at the end, combined with secret, secret mission, was just a cancer. So I'm really happy that they've changed this, and it's very, very, very good. So that being said, what you'll have to do now is you cannot rely on just banking those secret missions plus the primary points at the end, so you will have to adjust your game play to factor this in. So the core rule changes as well. There is one, and I had it open, but now I've just obviously lost my place, and it's stating around... Uh, let's have a look. I'm going to have to find it now. Excuse me a moment. I had it highlighted, rating, and then I clicked on the wrong thing and moved it around. Okay, ruins and visibility. In short, it says here, for vehicles excluding walker models that have a base... Or models without bases, every part of the model on its base, if it has one, is used for determining if it is not within, within or wholly within a ruin. For other models, the model's base is used to determine if it is not within, within or wholly within a ruin. And for the purpose of visibility into or through a ruin, visibility to and from such a model that overhangs its base is determined only by its base and parts of that model that do not overhang its base. So, you know, you are when you're in the ruin, you are determining line of sight from its base or parts that are not overhanging the base, rather than like sticking, like putting the tank in and sticking the gun out. Now, um, we're going to get a little bit of clarification on this because I know it's caused some confusion, and I am honestly still a little bit like confused until I see it and really understand it. Um, but I think it's just designed to kind of stop people from abusing, like sticking out parts of models um, to capitalize on line of sight. So I still think it will be true line of sight if you're overhanging um, a ruin shooting out. But in terms of the interaction within ruins, I'm going to have to do a bit more kind of like digging and talk to people just to kind of really understand it. Because I'll be honest, I'm like a little bit like there's too many words. GW have done the thing where they just put too many words in there. Um, but I get what they're trying to do here. So... Let's go on to the final thing of this episode, um, which is revealing my Kroot list. So, Kroot. <laughs> we know that they've basically been uh, given a massive points decrease. So let me just show you. This is my 2,000 points Kroot list that I made, well, about an hour ago now. Um, so, let's reveal it. Bosh, there we go. 
So, <laughs> what we've got, and we'll walk through the characters. We've got a Flesh Shaper, no enhancement. 45 points, bargain. We've got a Lone Spear with the Crute Hawk Flock, and he comes in at 100 points. And he's been given the, um, the Javelin. Okay, we've got the Trail Shaper. And my Trail Shaper has got... Uh, one second. Why am I long off? Anyway, never mind. Trail Shaper with Nomadic Hunter. So giving the units the extra movement of plus three movement and the assault keyword. Um, and I've then got a War Shaper with the root carved weapons for that sweet, sweet dark bone tri blade action to go and snipe out enemy characters. And I've got another Trail Shaper. That concludes my characters. Then I've got two units of 20 Kroot. Um, with two Tangle Bomb launchers. I'm not bothered with the Carbine because I'd just rather have the range and the crew and the damage too. No AP is not really something that I'm interested in. I've got a standard unit of 10 Kroot. Uh, so that's 50 standard Kroot. Then I've got Kroot Farstalkers and they've got the all the upgrades. Uh, I've given them the, uh, what do you call it, the Dog Variety Skinner, so the Flamer. And it's got Petra the Bird um, and that's the unit of 10 there. I've got two units of six Rampagers. Hell yeah. Cannot wait to get them back on the board. And I've got a single unit of five Crew Hounds. Remember, the Crew Lone Spear can give them OC, so they can go and do actions for me early doors. Being a unit of five, they can stretch out and do quite a few things for me. And they're only 40 points. Then, now Crew really struggle with dealing with tanks, right? Well, not in this list. Um, I have got three hammerheads, two of them with ion, one of them with a railgun, all on with seekers, all on with SMS. Then I just brought two sky rays as well, all SMS and seekers. And I brought two stealth suit teams. The reason I brought two stealth suit teams is obviously guiding for the, the, the vehicles, but more importantly, the free rapid ingress with the homing beacon, which can be used for my angry gorillas. So yeah, that's 2000 points. And uh, that's a lot of stuff, like a lot of stuff. And I've got anti-tank, I've got like horde, and I can bring a unit of 20 crew back at some point, uh, or I could bring back a unit of 10, do whatever I want. There's maybe secret mission play, maybe put a battle line unit in there, in their DZ. Uh, my warlord's a lone spear, maybe he gets onto a, on their home field objective, probably not, but it's an option. But I like it, and that's just a first glance list. So, that's the crew detachment. Um, a bit of fun that I created and it's good to see the angry chickens getting some love. Now, what's going to be happening next? Now, what I will say to you is that there's going to be a few things. Um, there's going to be a Discord call tonight on my Discord. Then I'm going to do a quick Q&A for everybody. It'll probably last around about an hour. Um, I'm going to be probably doing it around about 8 or 9 o'clock. I'll be advertising it on my Discord shortly. And um, I just want to kind of chat to the community. So if you are interested in getting involved, click on the link below, like and subscribe and do all that jazz to help me grow my channel. But more importantly, join the Discord. You've got the free community option. Um, you've obviously got options to upgrade and go to Pathfinder, Shaspre or Chassel. I'm going to be doing plenty of content and plenty of work within my subscribers. So honestly, if you are interested, the best place to be. You should know this by now. But come and join. You can ask me anything you want around the balanced data slate and my thoughts on Tau. And then for list building, if you really want to get into the nitty gritty list building, I know I've given you an example with the crew detachment here, but I'm going to be doing a big call for my Chasprays and Chasselles on Thursday. And we're going to be kind of going through some list concepts and ideas. Um, I've definitely got a few strong ones that are going to take the meta by storm. And I'm going to be going to a few events with it coming up shortly. But anyway, thank you for watching. I hope this has been really useful. But make sure you click on the link and join the Discord and take part in the Discord call later tonight. So thank you very much for your time. And uh, I bid you adieu and take care.